with the statue. It has been a landmark and tour, and you know, in Patrick's Street for over 100, 150 years, maybe maybe over it. I remember when I was a student in Farn we used to get days off. And, uh, you know, if you wanted to meet people, where, where, you know, they'd be going in different directions. Some would be going home to homes in the city, others would be going to films and so on. But we'd all like to come back together. Where would we meet? At the statue. I remember one occasion we were in the semi final of the Harty and Fan Fellas, and I was captain, that we decided uh, we got permission not to go downtown and celebrate. And then afterwards we went out in uh, different ways, so they would admit their Geller friends and all the rest of it, the young people at the time. And uh, we assembled again at the statue at 7 o'clock. And uh, you know, we were very much aware too of the history of the statue, I think, at the time. You know, in Van Ferris, we started history. And they were talking a lot about Father Matthew, the fact that he was uh, such a prominent capuchin, the man who built uh, Holy Trinity Church. And he was also involved in the temperance movement, which was praised so much by Daniel O'Connell, who was at the opening of the capuchin church in Holy Trinity. Uh, when, when, it, when it was open because uh, of his association with Father Matthew. So it has been a landmark down through the, uh, down through the years, figures very prominently in, in poetry and, and prose. And I think it's uh, something that uh, I think the citizens of Cork are proud of. You know, there was some effort last year, to, I think, to remove it slightly to either a side street or uh, further down or something like that, but there was a, there was a, a reaction to that and the people just weren't accepted. They said this is a staying, you know, it's a permanent fixture here in, the, in Patrick Street. Now, I remember when you were teaching me in Fern Ferris, temperance was very important to you for us as students. Uh, do you see a connection? Is Father Matthew a challenge today? I do. I, I think he is indeed. He's a challenge. We're all aware of the, uh, the, the, you know, the increase in alcohol taking among young people and so on, and it's a serious thing. Uh, we, we see that it could be, and sadly, the beginning of a, of a, a progression towards more serious drug taking. They say that about alcohol. And I think Father Matthew's message of temperance, and Father Matthew was very sensible. Like, he didn't go overboard with temperance. They could drink on special occasions, because the temperance pledge wasn't quite the same as the pioneer pin today, uh, when you, you abstained completely from all alcoholic drink. But Father Matthew was very sensible and allowed them to participate through at special celebrations, weddings, funerals, and so on. And that's why the temperance move becomes, became so popular. It literally swept the country at the time, started in Cork. And I think something that Cork would be always associated with it. And I think it's something that we should be, you know, aware of, it, especially at this time. And I think that Father Matthew could still serve as an example and inspiration for people today as we try to confront and challenge that question of drink taking, especially among young people, which is such a sad feature of life today and has led to many disturbances that we are sadly aware of here in the city. So you think it's important to celebrate the 150th? Well, I think I will be vital to celebrate the 150 because it's a landmark, 150th anniversary is a landmark. And if you, way back, I think I remember in the history books and so on, that when the, that statue was erected, it was an occasion of intense celebration in Cork at the time. It was a difficult period around the time of the famine or after it and so on, and people were suffering. and. Um, they, they, I think they turned to alcohol because to get away from the, from the misery of life and so on. And that's why Father Matthew said, no, the family is over. No, he said, the drink remains and let us, uh, let us attack, let us challenge it and let us address it. And that is exactly what he did through his temperance movement and fair play to Father Matthew. He travelled all over the country spreading this movement with the assistance of, as I said, Dan O'Connor was very supportive because he was holding his, at that time, his monster meetings around the country. And uh, he was aware, like that, uh, alcohol could affect uh, could affect the behaviour of the people at these uh, meetings, and hence that's why he was so supportive of Father Matthew and the Temperance Movement.